Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today, as promised, we will be talking about crocheting for beginners. I have finally been able to carve out some time alone so I can record for you guys. So let's just get right into it um, so we don't let that time go to waste. Um, today, if you are a beginner crocheter looking to get into crochet, you just started but you're kind of not sure what to do, where to go, to get supplies, what kind of yarn to use, what kind of crochet hook, what size of crochet hook, um, this video is for you. And if you've been crocheting for a while but just kind of want to brush up on a few things, this video is also for you. Um, so today I have my notebook here. Um, we will be talking about first and foremost yarn. Um, what kind of yarn we are going to want to buy as a beginner crocheter. Excuse me, I'm just trying to make sure my notebook doesn't hit the floor. <laughs> um, we are going to be talking about crochet hooks, as mentioned. We are going to talk about... Ta blah, blah, blah. Let me talk for the first time today, apparently. Um, we are going to be talking about what size of hook to use, um, what brand of hook to use, and maybe how to hold your hook, which isn't that important, but if you have questions about that, um, we will be talking about other um, tools needed to do crocheting, if there are any. And then um, what kind of, like, if, if there are patterns, you want to read patterns, you want to, um, what, what, what to crochet, essentially. Um, and ideas where to get stuff to crochet. So, as mentioned, first and foremost, the most important part of crocheting, yarn. And this is shaking my little table with my camera. So this is going to go over here. Sorry, I'm limited with space. I don't have a lot of desk space to put my stuff on. And, and there's a lot of stuff on top of my desk right now that I'm going to be showing you guys. So that kind of limits it a little bit more. So anyway, sorry if the camera was shaking for a few minutes there. Okay, back to my original topic here, yarn. So where do we go to buy yarn? Well, that kind of all depends on where you live. Um, if you live in this, in a city, not in the city, <laughs> in a city, there are plenty of them. Um, if you live in a city, um, there are probably yarn stores around you. Um, the most common will be probably Joann's, Michael's, um, and some Hobby Lobbies are, there's not a Hobby Lobby in each city, in each state, um, but in certain states and certain cities there are. So if, um, you're interested to see if there's a Hobby Lobby near you, just go ahead and Google it. Um. You may have to do a little bit of traveling. I know that um, certain big cities have Hobby Lobbies and not smaller cities. So I don't, where I live in North Dakota, we do have a Hobby Lobby. So that's helpful to me because I just love that store. They have yarn 30% off every other week. Um, so that's wonderful. And it's generally the kind of yarn I use, um, which we will talk about. Um, however, if you don't have a yarn store or a craft store near you, um, such as a Joann's, Michael's, or a Hobby Lobby, um, I would probably go online. You could probably order from Joann's or Michael's to your area, and sometimes Hobby Lobby, if uh, Hobby Lobby delivers to your area, um, or if they can ship to you. Um, Amazon, yes and no. It depends on the type of yarn you're looking for. In regards to buying yarn, I always look for yarn when it's on sale. Like I had mentioned, Hobby Lobby, if you have one near you, has yarn 30% off every other week. Um, and Joann's and Michael's generally have some sort of um, deal once or twice a month. Um, so check out the weekly ad for there. Um, for those stores. Um, I, I don't like to buy yarn full price. I am cheap like that since I have to buy so much of it for my business. Um, it's better to buy it when it's on sale and even better sometimes it's on clearance. Um, but I, I will always look for a sale. I will never buy yarn full price. So if you're just starting on, I recommend buying yarn on sale because for one, you don't know if you're going to like the yarn that you buy to work with for the first time. Um, number two, this may not be a hobby you want to put a lot of money into right away. Um, so, you know, just buy one skein and try to buy it as cheap as possible. 
because you're probably you're going to be making mistakes at first. Your your tension's going to be off. Your there's going to be a whole lot of things that are going to be happening when you are first starting out crocheting. That's going to also make a difference. You're probably going to be ripping back a lot. Um, you might have to cut your project off and throw it away. Um, unravel it. That's all going to work down the yarn. So I definitely um, would recommend um, buying cheap yarn or just not necessarily cheap yarn, but you know what I mean? Like yarn on sale where you don't have to pay full price for something because you don't even know if this is something that you're going to do full time or do not full time. Oh my goodness. I need my coffee today. Hold on one second. Got my coffee. I need more of it before I talk today, apparently. So you don't know if this is something that you're going to um, really enjoy and get into right away. Um, so I recommend just buying one skein um, at a time and make sure it's on sale. Um, like I mentioned, sometimes people can find yarn on Amazon. Um, the type of yarn that I buy um, for my projects and whatnot, um, it's more expensive on Amazon to buy it than it is in store, um, even though there's free shipping. But so I generally look in store if I can find it in store. Certain things I cannot find in store and I have to buy them online. Very rarely does it happen, but it does happen. Um, but I would prefer, um, I prefer to look in store. Um, and I recommend that you guys look in store as well first because you want to be able to see the yarn, touch the yarn, read the label, which we will talk about reading yarn labels next. Um, so you want to be able to see, do all those things um, for your first time buying yarn, looking at yarn, seeing what you like. Um, so there's my little tip on yarn, where to buy it, what to look for. Now, the type of yarn I recommend using as a beginner crocheter is size 4 acrylic yarn. Now let me show you what that is. So if you, the craft stores that you probably have near you are probably, like I mentioned, a Joann's or a Michael's and maybe a Hobby Lobby, but I'm going to focus on Joann's and Michael's because they're the most known in the area and most cities have one or both. Um, so if you go to a Joann's or a Michael's, you will probably see one of these. This is a Red Heart Super Saver. Um, this is a size four acrylic. Now I will get into how to read the label here in a moment. Um, you will probably find this at a Joann's or a Michael's. This is a size four acrylic yarn. Um, and, uh, they come in various colors. Now also rec I recommend when, when starting out, I recommend either buying one of the Red Heart Super Savers or when I was teaching, um, crochet quite frequently, I would recommend one of these. This is a Karen one pound skein of yarn. This is also a size four acrylic. Um, these are these can be found at Michael's, but they're, there's more colors that I have found at, at least at Joann's. So I prefer to go to Joann's first to look for my uh, acrylic yarn. Um, and like I said, buy it when it's on sale. These have sales pr at least once a month, I would say. Um, I think the last sale that we had was last week or the week before. And it was $8 for a skein of these, and these are normally 11 bucks. So that's a good deal. Um, now, I recommend a one pound skein because, as I mentioned, you're beginning. You're going to make mistakes, which is totally fine. You're going to probably have to rip your yarn back. You're going to probably want to cut it. You're going to put your projects aside that didn't turn out. Um, you're going to want to start over, different things like that. Um, so that's why I recommend probably a bigger skein because you, you have more yarn to work with. Um, and you can kind of restart and restart and restart as many times as you need to. Um, when you rip back a lot of times, your yarn will get kind of thin and worn a little bit. So you want to probably just toss that bundle aside and start with a new one. It's totally fine. Um, that way you have enough to work on whatever you're working on and get practice in. So you can do it over and over again. Um, if you're making a scarf, you can probably eventually make a whole scarf with this skein of yarn, plus have some left over. Um, if you're making just a small little like tester project, you will, you can make many rows or make multiples just to get practice in. Um, but yeah, I recommend the one pound, um, skein size four acrylic. Now, when I say size four acrylic, let me show you what I mean by that. So 
the brand, obviously. And as you can see right here, this is how much is in the skein of yarn. So um, if so you have 16 ounces, 453.6 grams, or I can't really read that. There we go. 812 yards or 742 meters. So however, whatever country you're in, whatever, um, if you guys um, read in grams, ounces, meters, yards, that's, that's where it's going to be. Now, we can also tell what size of yarn um, or weight of yarn it is. It's also can be called a weight. Um, so if you look, you will see right here, whoops, a medium, oh my goodness, I am just struggling here. Okay, medium four. So this is a size four medium weight yarn. And that's what I recommend buying for beginner crocheters. Now I do that because this is not too thick and it's not too thin. Um, it seems to be, it was just right for me. Um, the people that I teach crochet with, um, they usually prefer this yarn as well. Um, I don't recommend using a super thin yarn like a baby weight yarn or a sport weight yarn. And I definitely don't recommend using a thick yarn. Um, when I say thick, let me see if I can find one here. I'm sure you guys have seen them. But for instance, um, this is a thick yarn. This is a size five or six. I don't have the label for it right now, but I, it's a bulky weight yarn. Um, I don't recommend using a bulky weight or a super bulky weight, and by super bulky, I mean the really thick Bernat blanket yarns, um, because they are dif more difficult to work with, um, with your hands. Um, I literally recently, probably last year, just started using the super bulky, um, size six or bigger yarn, um, to make pillows with, and it was, it's a workout on your hands. Your tension is going to be a little bit different with your, um, with your bulky weight yarns. Um, and with your smaller weight yarns, it's going to be different as well. Medium, it's obviously, obviously when you're starting out, your tension is going to be off anyway. So I recommend doing it the easiest way possible and having a medium weight yarn. So your tension isn't going to be you know, super tight because of the weight of the yarn that you're working with, the difficulty of using a bigger yarn or a smaller yarn. Um, so definitely I don't recommend using a bulky weight yarn um, to start out with. I recommend using a medium worsted weight um, size four. And uh, it'll also say the color. This is grass green. And like I said, I bought that at Joann's. It also says on the on the next to the size of the yarn right here, up a little bit there, um, it says what kind of, what size of hook to use. Um, so this recommends a five millimeter hook in knitting needles or a crochet hook. Now, I will be getting into what size of um, hook I recommend to use as a beginner crochet in just a minute. Um, so we won't go into that, but the yarn does tell you what size is recommended for whatever, for the project with this yarn. Not necessarily any particular project, but if you're using this yarn, that's what they recommend. You don't have to use what they recommend. Um, now I'll show you this other one. So that was the Karen one pound cake, um, or one pound skein. I say cake because there's a cake next to me, like a, like a, you have skeins that are actually called cakes. Anyway, um, so the next I will show you is the Red Heart Super Saver. Just kind of, this is an older one. Um, I've had this, I got this given to me from somebody who used to crochet years ago. So I don't know if this um, yarn is even um, still, <laughs> still in the store. Um, the color is country blue. Um, let me show you the label here so it says no dye lot you will notice that the color is country blue right there um many when i mentioned no dye lot here not all um not all skeins of yarn have a dye lot number um some of them do and some of them don't let me see if the karen cake has a dye lot number <laughs> yep 
No. The Karen Cake does not have a dye lot number. Sometimes if they don't have a color of yarn, they will have a dye lot number. Or certain, certain brands will have a dye lot number. Now this is an older skein of yarn, so that might be why it does. Um, I am not 100% sure. Um, however, um, let's find the, the weight. Uh, oh, right here. Okay, so this is also a, you can see, my, I apologize that my camera does not want to zoom in. There we go. Okay, so it's a size 4, medium. Oh, also, I didn't mention on this on the last one, but it also has washer and dryer instructions on each skein of yarn. Um, this one is washer, dryer, safe, but do not iron, because it's acrylic, which means it's made out of plastic fab fibers. Um, and it recommends using it with a five millimeter hook again and five mil millimeter need knitting needles. Um, and in this is 198 grams, seven ounces or 364 yards or 333 meters. And that's all kind of in various places on the Sometimes you just got to read the uh, label a little bit and just look it over to find all the information on there. Oh, and this one, this is a fun little fact. This one actually tells you how to find the ends of your yarn, which I will be showing you here in a few moments. However, but if you're, conf if you don't know, and this, I didn't know, I didn't know for one, this was on a skein because nobody ever showed me. So I wanted to share it with you guys how to find the ends of a skein of yarn and not make the painful mistakes that I did of taking it from the outside and unrolling it, which is just awful. It's horrible. Um, but it's okay if you do that. If, that. if that's what you prefer, then that's what you prefer. I prefer to work from the inside of the ball. Um, so helpful hint on the this one, Red Heart Super Saver. Sometimes they do have the how to find the ends of the yarn and which one to use. Okay, so that is about labels. So just recapping now, um, I rec recommend a size four medium um, acrylic yarn. Acrylic is easy to work with. It does not shrink if you need to wash it um, and dry it in the dryer, 100% dryer, washer safe. Um, and it's easy to work with, with your hands. It's not too difficult like the smaller yarn or the bigger yarn would be. Um, so now, um, let me just, okay, we mentioned finding the end of yarn. So let's find the end of yarn. And this one's pretty easy. So on most skeins of yarn, you're going to have, you're going to have an end that's like the outside is tucked in and you pull it out and it's going to look like this. When you do, when you see that, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the skein of yarn and you're going to find the, uh, sometimes it is hanging out of the end. You will find the inside of the, of the skein hanging out, which is perfect. Then you don't need to look for it. Um, but half the time it will not be hanging out of the end. So you're going to have to know where to find it. And like I said, it's going to be on the opposite, um, of where this outside tail is. You're not going to want to pull from the inside of where the outside tail is. You want to pull from the opposite end. And I will find a skein of yarn so I can show you exactly what I mean. Let's see if... Um, okay, this is a good one. So this one... That... Oh, nope, that's not a good one. Just kidding. That one was already out. My bad. Okay, let's find one that the center is not out. Okay. This is, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. This is a um, size four acrylic. Let's see if I can find the, um, yep. It's in really small letters though on this one. Uh, my camera's not gonna wanna focus here. But anyway, it's right on the bottom here. Size four acrylic. Um, now, as you can look over this skein of yarn, you will see a little, oh, there we go. Let's see where you can see it here. Um, you'll see a little, th little tail going inside the yarn. I'm going to pull that out. 
because that gives me an idea as to where the inside of my yarn is going to be. So like I mentioned, so this is going to be the side of the outside tail. So you don't want to go in and find it, the tail in there because you're not going to be able to. You're going to go to the opposite end of where the outside tail is. And this one, you cannot see a tail hanging out. So that means you're going to have to dig for it a little bit. And that's going to look a little bit like this. This is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Um, this one's definitely going to give, give me a problem. But you essentially just pull out the inside um, and then you will find... Once you pull out the inside, um, you will, here it is, you will find the inside and you can pull, work from the inside out, which is going to make your skein a lot easier to handle. It's not going to be flopping about as if you were working from the outside loop. It would be flopping about. Believe me, I made that mistake many times. Um, so the opposite end of the outside tail is where you're going to find the inside tail. And you definitely want to work from my recommend working from the inside of a skein of yarn, not the outside. So that looks just awful. I'll have to shove that back in at some point. Um, so we got where to buy yarn. Um, yarn sales. We talked about um, what kind of yarn is the best to start with. Um, we talked about different types of yarn brands. There are way more brands of yarn than just the few... Mm, excuse me, just the few I mentioned. Um, however, I'm not going to mention every skin of yarn out there because I don't know every skin of yarn brand out there. So, um, how many skeins do you need for a project? Well, that varies on the project you're working on. Um, when you begin, it's sort of a trial and error basis, in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't say I, it's kind of, it, again, it varies. Your tension's going to be different. The size of hook you use is going to be different. Um, the project you're using is going to vary. So let's just, let's just start with a scarf. Okay. Let's just start with a simple scarf. One skein of the one pound Karen yarn should make a scarf. Now, you will notice when you go to the store, you will notice that variegated. Now, when I say variegated, let me, let me show you what I mean by that. Ooh. Ooh, stay in there. No. Okay. That's just going to stay there. Ouch. I have a complete disaster on the floor again, because I have no room in my closet or storage for any of the projects that I finished and are waiting to be sold. So I have to like work around everything. And now every time I pull out a skinny yarn, everything comes out. Okay. So variegated yarn looks like this. It is, um, multicolors sometimes other times it is, um, I don't have a variegated green down here. I don't think. No. Um, so, um, like, let's say I wanted a variegated, a variegated green to go with this one. There is a green that has this green and then multiple greens in it. Um, that's a variegated, a variegated green. Um, so the variegated skeins I have found, um, are actually smaller, even though they're the one pound cakes, they are smaller in size. Um, than the solid colors. And that's in cotton yarn. That's in bulky yarn. That's in anything. For some reason, I don't know why, there's not as much variegated in a one pound skein as there is in a one pound skein of solid. So if you're using a one pound skein of variegated, you may need one and a half skeins. You may need two. It depends on what you're, on what you're doing, how big your scarf is, how many rows it is, how big the hook you're using is, that kind of thing. So just be prepared for that. I found out the hard way doing that. Um, I only bought a certain, like this is the worst. So if you buy one color and you only buy like, let's say one or two skeins for a big project and you, you end up needing to go back for more. And then you find out that they clearance the yarn they're using and there is no more. It's gone. Now you're going to have to get creative and either get rid of the project, turn it into something else. <laughs> I, I never recommend getting rid of your project. Turn it into something else. Um, make it smaller, make it something, but don't throw it away. Um, but I've done that a few times 
is I've not bought enough yarn to begin with. It's better to have more yarn than you need than not enough, especially if it's clearanced out or it's, um, if it's taken off, like if it's just gone. Um, sometimes they'll just discontinue yarn. So um, I recommend doing that, especially with the variegated colors. Like I said, the skeins are, you, you can see in size. So this is Red Heart Super Saver and Red Heart Super Saver. See the size difference? Um, the skeins are just, the variegated skeins are smaller than the big ones. And that is, that's been my experience with any variegated color and any solid color. The, the variegated are smaller in any skein. Um, so that is, we, we talked about finding the ends. Um, how many skeins essentially are you going to need? Um, I always like beginner projects, um, one to two skeins of yarn. I don't, I don't always go with a really big project. Um, if you're beginning, don't do a big project, do something small so you can see, so you can see your accomplishment sooner. If you choose, if your first project is a queen size blanket, that is going to be a very, I don't want to say disappointing, um, but it's going to be a little bit discouraging because you're going to be working on it and working on it, working on it. It's going to get boring and you're going to feel like you're never going to get done. And if you are struggling with just learning to crochet, then you're really going to have a problem because this is a big project. This takes, depending on how much time you have, weeks, months, sometimes years to finish. So I recommend doing a project that is smaller, easy to do, um, works up quickly, and requires the least amount of yarn, just for a beginner. That's what I recommend. But we will talk more about what kind of projects, um, where to find projects, that kind of thing, in just a little bit. But for as number of skeins of yarn, that all depends on what you're doing. Make sure you buy um, enough yarn for um, at least one project. Um, like I said, it's better to have more yarn than not enough. Um, let's see here. We talked about washing instructions. Um, I always check the washing instructions, especially if you're giving it for a gift. Um, and then let them know, um, what, how to take care of their project. Um, if it's a blanket, I always, again, I use the acrylic yarn because it's washer and dryer safe. Um, all acrylic yarn is washer and dryer safe. If it's not, it's probably hand dyed. I just check the washing and washing and drying instructions. But all of the acrylic yarn that I buy, such as the Red Heart Super Saver, the Karen Pound, the I Love This Yarn, that is all washer and dryer safe. Um, and that is a main reason why I use it in the blankets projects. That is a reason why I use it for wearable art, wear, wearable art, wearables, <laughs> wearables like hat scarves, um, headbands, that kind of thing, because it can be washed frequently. Um, it doesn't melt. It doesn't, you know, get destroyed and the washer and dryer does not shrink. Okay. So moving on from yarn, if you guys have any questions about yarn, please leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you with those answers as soon as I can. Um, I probably missed something and I apologize. Um, uh, but everything I had written down, I talked about. So, but if there is a question that you guys have that I did not talk about, please leave it in the comments and I will answer that. Um, so let's talk about, let's move on to hooks now. So what type of hook do you need? What size of hook? What brand of hook? These are all different things that we need to address. I'm going to put the yarn away. So it's off my desk. Oh, and apparently on the floor now. Take a sip of my coffee. Okay. So hooks, where do I buy them? Um, again, I recommend, I recommend buying hooks in the store. Now I say that because when you're first crocheting, you're going to want something to touch. You're going to want to touch it. You're going to want to look at it. You're going to want to examine it because this is a hook that you're going to be using. What's going to be comfortable for you to use. Now they're in, like I mentioned, the two craft stores that are most you know, prominent in cities are Michael's and Joann's, which 
means that they have two specific brands. There, there may be others, but these are the two that are most common. Um, they have um, Susan Bates, which is the brand that I use. And I will show you an example of that here. This is a Susan Bates hook. This is a 11 and a half or a P. Um, so this is, this is a larger hook. I don't recommend using this size as a beginner. But this is a Susan Bates hook. I chose this one because it's white, it's easy to see, and it's bigger so you can see it. Now, another one, and I don't actually have, I have one type of this hook. Um, I don't carry this brand because I don't like to use it personally because of the way that I hold a hook. And when you start crocheting, you will see probably the difference um, in the different types of hooks and how you hold your hook. Um, there's not a right or wrong way to hold it. Um, so, but I, there are two different types of ways to hold your hook that I'm aware of. I mean, there are probably many others, but two of the main ways to hold your hook is in the knife grip or the pencil grip. And I hold my hook in the pencil grip. So like this, you'll see me using it like this. Most people use it like this. That's just the way it's the way you learn. It's the way you're comfortable holding the hook. Don't folk when you start crocheting don't focus on how to hold your hook just focus on what's comfortable okay just start crocheting let let the hook be in your hand and just if it's comfortable do it that way don't worry about how you should be doing it there's no right or wrong way to hold your hook it's however you are most comfortable because you're going to be the one using it <laughs> it's going to be your hand that's going to be sore or not um you're going to be if, if you like using it the pencil grip you may find the, the susan bates hook is better for you. If you're using it in the knife grip, you might find that the Boy brand is better for you. Now let me show you what the Boy brand, B-O-Y-E, is the brand. Ooh, my hook's going to take a dive here. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. That's the label, but it's really hard to see. B-O-Y-E is the other brand, and here is what that looks like. It is more of a kind of a loop and not so much a sharp angle as you can see. You see the difference between them. So Susan Bates is the white one and the boy is the blue one. And I'm showing you this because what I have noticed and in my personal experience, I have tried both brands of hooks. Now for the way that I hold my hook as mentioned, which is in the pencil grip, I need that sharper angle of the end of the hook um, because I the way that I bring up my yarn through the stitch um, it, um, it were, it's smoother with the Susan Bates hook for me. When I was using a boy hook with the more rounded tip um, I would find that because I'm using the pencil grip and the way that I pull my yarn through the stitch it was the the hook was hooking on the yarn as I was bringing it through and causing it not to come through. Um, so I immediately switched to this yarn, this hook, and it went way smoother. Um, my now my friends and people I know that use the boy hooks, they actually use a knife grip, and the way that they bring their, the way they crochet, and the way that they bring their yarn through the stitch, is easier for them to use with this style of hook. Now you may find that's the case, um, you may not. Again, your personal preference, how, whichever brand you prefer to use. Um, now, um, there's no right or wrong. So don't, you know, I to begin with, I would buy one of each brand and see which one you are most comfortable with. Now, as far as sizing, uh, don't use these sizes, <laughs> okay? Um, this is a size 16. 15.75. This one is a huge hook. Don't use it. I'm showing you this because this is the only boy hook I have and it's easier for you to see it as a larger hook. Now the size of hook that I recommend using, and I have mentioned this in my videos, um, I recommend one or two. There's two different sizes. Now with the size for acrylic yarn, I have found personally and the people that I have taught have also found and just my personal experience, 
Um, there are two different kinds of hooks that I recommend. Now it's personal preference. If you like a little bit bigger hook, um, I recommend a size six and a half. Oh, my camera is not liking anything today, is it? Okay, sorry. But on the, <laughs> on the hook, it'll say um, 6.5 or um, a K or a 10. Um, that's in the Susan Bates brand. Like I said, I don't have a boy brand. I'm sorry um, to show you what that one says. Um, now, I recommend a 6.5 if you prefer a little bit bigger of a hook. Some people do, some people don't. My mom, she likes to crochet with the bigger hook because she has, um, uh, her eyesight has some issues and she's older. Um, it's easier for her to see the stitches if they're a little bit bigger. Um, now for those that prefer a smaller hook, um, to use, I would recommend the five and a half millimeter. And this is, you'll, if you watch any of my other tutorials, you will see that this is the hook I use most frequently. Um, the five and a half millimeter, this is the hook that I started out with because it was easy for me to handle. It was a perfect size. Um, and I've stuck to it, honestly. It's my go-to hook for almost every project. Um, so let's see if my, my, uh, there we go. So 5.5 millimeter, um, an I or a nine in the U S. Um, these two I recommend if you are a beginner crocheter. Now, again, for just starting out, you don't know how to, you know, you know, you don't know how you're going to hold your hook or you're new to crochet. I would buy one now choose, choose whatever. I mean, you can buy one of each size. Absolutely. Um, and then I would also buy one of each brand just to see which one that you guys would want to use. Um, just test them out, work with it a little bit, see which one's more comfortable for you to use. But I recommend using a medium size, which is a five and a half or a six and a half um, to start out with. It's easiest. Um, like I said, the bigger hooks are going to be harder on your hands. Just like um, if you get a super small hook, that's also going to be harder on your hands. Um, so I don't recommend using those right away. Um, now we talked about brands. We talked about sizes there. Um, there, well, we didn't really talk about sizes. We mentioned a few sizes. There are many sizes of hooks. Um, the biggest hook that I have ever used is a size 25 millimeter, which is, oh, about twice this size. That really hurt my hands. So I... <laughs> If you're doing a project that requires that, just be just be prepared for hand and arm pain. Um, that has been my personal experience with the big, big hooks. Um, and I, I used it one time, and I don't intend on ever using a size 25 millimeter hook again. <laughs> um, but they go as, I, I don't know how small of a hook I have. Um, let me Let me just check. Um, oh, my crochet hooks are falling everywhere. When you go hook shopping, um, I just, I just would just take a look at all of the size of hooks that they have. Um, but first I would, you know, pick the two or the, you know, the medium sizes that I mentioned, work with those. And then if you eventually want to change to something bigger or something smaller, um, you certainly can do that. Just take a look at what they have. Um, now that's all going to um, be, it's going to feel different to work with. If you work with a super small hook and then you go to a medium hook, it's going to feel different. If you work with a medium hook and then you go to a super small hook, it's going to be different. Um, you're going to hold, you're going to, your tension on your yarn is going to be different. It's going to be different to, cro it's going to be probably a little bit difficult at first to crochet with. Um, the smallest crochet hook I have is a Susan Bates. Now this one was given to me as a, um, in a, a box of yarn that was somebody else's. Um, I have never actually used this hook. This is just one that I actually just have. I won't, I don't plan on ever using a hook this small. Um, I don't need to use a hook this small for anything that I make. Um, but this one is a 2.2 millimeter. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of size comparison here. 
it's pretty, pretty significantly smaller. This is a 2.2 or a 2 in the US. Um, they come even smaller than that. Um, they make these super tiny hooks that, I, that a lot of people use for like tatting or other different projects, sometimes really small doily projects, um, where the, the hook is so small that you can barely see the tip. Um, I am not one to work with stuff that small because working with the smallest hook that I actually use is a 2.75 and that is fairly small. Um, so I don't personally <laughs> use a small, small hook, but if that's something you do, all power to you. Um, good for you. I don't have the patience to work with a hook that small where I can't even see the tip. <laughs> So, um, but they do come super small just to give you kind of a size variant. Um, I don't know what the biggest hook ever made was. The biggest one I've ever worked with is a 25 millimeter. That is the biggest one I've seen sold in stores. Um, they might come bigger. I don't know. But in my area, that is the biggest, the biggest hook that they make or that, that they sell anyway, not that they make necessarily that they sell. That might not be the case somewhere else. Um, but as far as, what was I going to say next? Um, so um, you have a couple hooks. You got your yarn. Well, how are we going to keep our, our hooks so we don't lose them? Um, I would probably recommend buying a a storage case for your hooks. Now, many different, many different kinds of storage cases. Um, if you have a Hobby Lobby in your area, this is what I ended up choosing. So I got a little, this is actually found in the sewing, um, over in the sewing notations, um, in Hobby Lobby, and it's probably used for different sewing stuff. I found it perfect for my yarn. Or not my, oh my god, not my yarn. Holy smokes, forget I said that. Um, I need a nap. Uh, it's been a rough day. Uh, my hooks. <laughs> Sorry. My hooks, not my yarn. Okay, so, and here's why I find it nice. So I have a lot of hooks. Um, all of my hooks, now that, no, I use this for traveling, especially. And, um, before I got the system I use now, which is a backpack with a hook holder in it, um, I use this for storing all of my hooks, my needles, my tools, my my scissor, my um, my uh, tape measure, everything. So I found that my hooks go nicely in this little zipper compartment, like that. Then I can put I can put my tape measure in here my little needle hook, my needle case in here, my scissor fits in there, and then I can zip it up and take it with me wherever I go. And I know where everything is when I wanna work on a project. So it's not falling all over the place. It's not getting lost. Um, I bought one of these for my mom because she was notorious for losing her hooks. She put it in the bag just loosely and it would get literally like it would just disappear. It would probably fall out of the bag somewhere. Um, it would also fall into like, cause when you work, work on a skein of yarn for a number of, you know, time for a longer time, it gets flimsy, it gets loose, it gets, you know, and the hook would actually get lost inside there and she wouldn't be able to find it. So she'd have to get another one. And she wouldn't remember what size she was working with because she didn't pay attention to it. So she'd have to start her project over again. So I got her one of these to keep her hooks. And then I got her a backpack where there's hook storage. So that kind of solved that problem. But as a beginner crochet, crocheter, I would recommend getting a pouch for your hooks. You can use a pencil case. I've done that as well. Before I got this one, I used a zippered pencil pouch. For my hooks which work perfectly also you can fit your yarn needles in um your scissor make sure you can fit well you don't need to necessarily fit your scissor in there but um fit everything small that is going to be you know worrisome to lose uh, fit that in there and then that'll be perfect 
So however you want to store your yarn hooks, I recommend a zipper pouch, um, something like this. I found this at Hobby Lobby, as mentioned, in the sewing aisle. Um, they do have um, metal cases for hooks. Um, they have so many cases. If you don't find anything in the store you like, try Amazon. They have so many, so many storage ideas for hooks. Um, so we have talked about sizes. We have talked about um, brands. Um, we have talked about storage. Um, so as far as hooks go, that is what you need to know so far. Um, now let's talk about beginning out and what you should crochet. Now, like I said, an easy pattern. Um, if you don't know how to read a pattern, um, I'm actually thinking about doing a how to read a pattern um, video tutorial um, or showing you guys how to do that. Um, or if you do know how to read a pattern, where do you find patterns? Um, Pinterest is a big one. Um, Ravelry.com. You do have to uh, set up an account there, um, but it's free. Um, to find free patterns. Some patterns you do have to pay for if you choose, um, but most patterns are free. Um, I, for starting out, I always go with a free pattern. I do simple crochet on Pinterest. Just type in beginner crochet patterns. They have so many of them and they're free. Um, let's see, um, books. Now I have only ever bought a few books in my day because most of the pattern, I've made up a lot of patterns of stuff that I sell. Um, other stuff I have um, found online for free. Um, but for beginner crocheters, um, if you're interested in books, it talks about techniques, the type of yarn, that kind of thing. I will show you two books that I would recommend. Um, you could probably find these on Amazon. I got them in store, but I'm sure that they still sell them on Amazon. So the first book I ever bought was The Crochet Bible. Um, where's the author at? There's their author. Sue Whiting. Whiting, Whiting, however you pronounce that, I'm sorry. Um, the Crochet Bible. It talks about ideas, techniques, um, inspiration. Um, this one, they have, I'll just show you a few things here. Um, so they talk about techniques, they talk about different stitches, um, so here are some basic stitches, um, here are the very basic stitches, and you can also learn how to read, um, stuff in here, read, read, uh, patterns, they teach you how to do, um, different stitches. They have more complicated stitches. Um, they have granny squares, motifs, that kind of thing. Um, little things to work on. They also have clothing and stuffed animals. Um, so this, this, I found, I found helpful for the basic stitches, the little, um, the little like stitch guides here. Um, that's what I found useful for. Um, also it talks about, um, Let's see if I can find it. So they actually show you step by step on how to do certain stitches, which is also helpful um, if you're confused about reading it. Because like I said, before I started crocheting, I did not watch anybody do it on YouTube. Um, I had never read patterns before. I started reading them and figured it out eventually, but it was trial and error mostly until like I found this book after I started many years after, um, but it would have been helpful to have. Um, just for the basic stuff. Now, I, I've never made the clothing in here. I'm not a clothing maker person. Just, it's easy because it's, it's basic stuff, but, um, not my thing. So, if you are interested in any of that, though, um, I recommend this book. Now, the second book I found even more helpful, and I got this probably about, about 10 years ago. Um, maybe less than 10 years ago, is the Ultimate Crochet Bible. Now, this one is even more in detail about step-by-step. -step. Um, teaches you how to work a chain. 
um, it teaches you how to do that. So if you're better at written stuff and pictures, then this is, this is for you. Now this, the author for this is, um, Jane Crowfoot right there. And it, it, like it says, it says references with step-by-step -step techniques for many projects. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, but it has granny squares. It has chevron stitches. It has puff stitches. It has cable stitches. Um, just, just a variety of things. And like I said, it has techniques step-by-step. -step. So again, I would recommend this book. Probably these two are the, the two books that I recommend if you're just starting. Um, patterns, you can find patterns in there. Um, patterns online. You can buy magazines with patterns in them. Make sure you get the beginner friendly ones. Um, on, I always type in when searching online beginner friendly crochet patterns um, because they have intermediate you know, hard. They have a variety of different patterns. You want to make sure you're not, you're working on the very easiest one that you can find. Um, and if if you you know if you don't like what they have, then find a different one. There's so many out there. There are so ver many variations of different patterns. Um, so I recommend going online to find patterns. But if you're into books, um, these two were really helpful to me. Um, like I said, I didn't start realizing that there were books. Until after I started crocheting, I didn't know how to read a pattern, that kind of thing. I had to do it kind of figuring it out by myself. Um, and with the pictures, I was able to figure out different stitches as well. Um, so that was helpful. So that's what I would recommend. Um, now, we, we can go more into patterns later um, when I talk about different patterns and um, we start doing pattern tutorials. Um, I can go into different patterns if you guys would like. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Um, now, last but not least, I want to talk about other tools that you will need as a beginner crocheter. Obviously, crochet hooks. Um, I would, like I said, buy um, two um, to see which ones you like. What, you know, those two sizes that I recommended, I would try one of each and then try one of each brand that I talked about. Um, what I found helpful also, you're going to need a yarn needle. Now, I use, oh, before I finish, this is where I, what I forgot when it came to hooks. Um, types of hooks, they have plastic, they have stainless steel. Um, I started using stainless steel. I just did. I was comfortable with it. Um, they also make plastic ones. Um, whatever you're comfortable with, with I'm comfortable with. I'm. Um, I rec I would recommend either of these two. Um, plastic or stainless steel. Now, bear in mind, um, stainless steel, like they are, they have a color on to, all over them. They're not just silver. Um, now, as you can see on this one. See where there's a little silver patch? So my, because I use these so frequently, I'm actually wearing the paint or the color off of the stainless steel ones and it will leave a dark mark on your finger. At least it does on mine. Um, but that's normal. It washes right off. Um, and sometimes if you use it as much as I do, you can actually wear all of the color off from um, working with it and everything. Um, so if you don't want to worry about that, I would buy plastic. Um, so stainless steel or plastic, whatever you choose. Um, yarn needles. This is a yarn needle. Make sure I use a stainless steel yarn needle. They come in plastic. Um, I don't use the plastic ones because they can break. Um, I would not recommend a plastic yarn needle for beginner crocheters because your tension's probably going to be really tight or really loose. And if it's really tight, when you're weaving in the ends of your projects with your yarn needle, it's probably going to break. Um, stainless steel yarn needles do not break. I recommend these. They also have a sharper tip, so it's easier to poke through if you have a tighter tension. And you can get a grip on it a little bit better without having to worry about breaking it. I have never broken a needle. However, I have bent a yarn needle one time. I was working on a pot holder. My pot holders are double skeined and they have a super tight tension. I was pulling this needle through. It would not come. I was pulling and pulling and pulling and needless to say, it was going one way and my hand was going another and it bent into an L shape. I still have it because it is helpful to use sometimes when I'm making pot holders. Um, 
However, it's fine if it happens. They don't bend that easy. I was just really, really working that needle that day. So um, I would recommend a stainless steel yarn needle. Now, you can buy these both in-store and online. Um, some, when I, when I started, they were called darning needles. So, darning needles. Um, tapestry needles you can buy. That's the same thing. It has the bigger hole. I recommend the ones with the bigger hole at the end so you can weave in the you can stick the yarn through it's easier um as far as where to buy them you're probably going to get more yarn needles for a cheaper price online than you will in store there's usually about 249 for a set of two stainless steel yarn needles in store which isn't bad um but you can get twice the amount of yarn needles online on amazon that you can in store so, and these ones, you probably want to get a case such as this. You can also buy that online. Um, sometimes, depending on the store, I got this one at Hobby Lobby. They have a set of two that I'm aware of. Um, so you can buy a case for them there. They have them at Michael's and Joann's as well. They have a clear plastic case. Um, you're going to want to keep your yarn needles in like a Ziploc bag or something because they will get lost. I have lost three or four yarn needles now in the last two years um, because they were just laying around. They don't get lost if I keep them in this. I know where they are. Um, but I would probably recommend buying them online. Uh, make sure they have a big enough hole. Um, if you really need a bigger hole, um, if, you, if you're at, you have bad eyesight, I would recommend getting a wool needle. It's a yarn needle with a really big eye. Um... So you can stick it. It's for wool yarn, essentially. Um, so if you are looking into getting something with a super big eye, then I would do that. I'll get a wool needle. Otherwise, a yarn needle. You can find them. They're also called darning needles in the in the store sometimes. That's what I've found to use. Tapestry needles work. Um, as far as needles, that's that. Um, also, a scissor. You're going to need a scissor. I would recommend a fabric scissor, get a decent scissor, you know, spend, you know, $25, $30 on a scissor. Um, it's going to last you. You're going to use it a lot. Um, I mean, that, that that's just my preference. I mean, if you're, you, any scissor will really work. Um, you can buy uh, a cotton floss scissor. That certainly works. Um, I use such a variety of different kinds of yarns that I found that a fabric says it works best for me. Um, that's just my experience. Um, so it's, it's worth it to spend a little bit of money on a scissor. However, you don't have a little bit of money, just buy whatever scissor you can afford. It'll work. Um, last but not least, I would recommend getting a, a measuring tape. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. It was clearanced out in my store this year. Um, but they make a bunch of other ones. If you go in like in the sewing area, you can find a measuring tape, a fabric, a measuring tape would work just fine. Um, that's something else I recommend getting a measuring tape. Um, so scissor, tapestry needle, yarn needle, darning needle, whatever you choose to buy. Um, measuring tape. Those are the basic tools that I would recommend using or having along with you when you begin your crochet journey. I'm not saying you're going to use every, you will definitely use the yarn needle and you will definitely use the crochet hook and you will definitely use the scissor. As far as the measuring goes, that is project based. That is if you need one, but it's always good to have one on hand because if you're working on something like a hat, you might need to measure your head and you want a fabric scissor, not a hard, um, not a hard scissor, uh, heart. You want to, oh my God, I can't even talk today. This is bad. I'm sorry. I guess that means I better wrap it up, huh? Anyway, instead of a hard metal tape measure, you want a fabric tape measure or one that you can, you know, maneuver around a little bit. Um, I found that's helpful. So a fabric tape measure, um, something that's bendable that can go around your body, around your hips, around whatever you're going to measure, um, that's not hard. But as far as anything else beginning beginner crochet related, that is what I got for you guys today. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will get to those comments and answer them as promptly as I can. 
Um, I think next week I will be able to put up another tutorial. I am thinking of uh, maybe just do a... Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a tutorial like... Um, like... Um, I have not done the half double crochet stitch. So maybe we'll do that. Or I will do a crochet with me um, video where I just chat and crochet. We will see how I'm feeling next week what my schedule looks like, um, how much time I have to do this video. So that is the plan for next week. I do plan on putting up a video next week. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you want to see more crochet content, more tips, more tricks, stuff like that, go ahead and subscribe down below. Um, hit the like button if you found this helpful. If you just liked it, if, if you got a good laugh out of me trying to talk today, just like it. That's what I do. I like videos that I, I just laugh. If, if, if somebody in the video makes me laugh, even if I don't learn anything, I like the video because they made me laugh. So, and there was definitely a lot of um, learning to talk today happening. It's obviously been a couple weeks since I've done a video. So, I apologize for that. But it was nice to be able to do another video for you guys. I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, be patient with yourself. You're going to make mistakes if you're beginning crocheting. Um... Just do something easy. Um, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video. Bye!